Hello and welcome to the Bootstrap for Wappler series of videos. In this video I will discuss the card which comes as a component in the Bootstrap framework. A card is a flexible and extensible content container. It includes options for headers and footers, a wide variety of content, contextual background colors, and powerful display options. But before I discuss the actual card, I'll take you through the four different options of the card layout. Here I have a new document that I have pre-populated with a fixed container. Inside the container are four rows, each with a full width column. The rows are separated by a bottom margin. Inside the column of the first row, I add a card. As you can see, the card occupies the full width of the column. This is because cards have no fixed width to start, so they naturally fill the full width of the parent element. There are different sizing options which I will come back to later. For now, I will duplicate the column a couple of times so that we finish up with three cards. Inside the column of the second row, I add a card group. Inside the card group I add a card. I then duplicate the card a couple of times. Card groups render cards as a single, attached element with equal width and height columns. Inside the column of the third row, I add a card deck. Inside the card deck I add the images as before. A card deck renders the cards that aren't attached to one another, but with equal width and height. Be aware of the next major version of Bootstrap which has dropped the card deck. With that in mind, I would suggest to no longer use this option. Inside the column of the last row, I add card columns. With card columns, cards can be organized into masonry-like columns. The cards are ordered from top to bottom and left to right. To illustrate this, I will add cards of differing heights. Heads up! Wappler has an amazing masonry grid of its own. It is far more flexible and superior to this bootstrap option. Therefore, I will use the Wappler masonry grid option later on. I will now remove both, the card columns and card deck options from the page. To my way of thinking, these two options are no longer relevant. Keeping in mind, the Wappler option and bootstrap 5. This leaves us with the card deck and the grid options. To show the equal height feature of the card deck, I add more text to one of the cards. Here we see that the other cards adjust their height to the card with the greatest height. I will now also remove the card deck from the page. This is so that I can concentrate on the next section. The aim here is to concentrate on the card. Cards are built with as little markup and styles as possible, but still manage to deliver a ton of control and customization. Built with Flexbox, they offer easy alignment and mix well with other bootstrap components. They have no margin by default. Here I have added a couple of images to the assets folder. I'll add these images to our composition by clicking on the image placeholder and choosing the image. As long as the images are of the same proportions, they will comfortably fit inside the card. In my case I have the images proportioned to 15 by 10. The actual size of the garden image is 1650 by 1100 pixels. The street view image is 500 by 330 pixels. When I remove the last column, the cards are resized. This is because the width of the column is set to auto. Shortly, I will show you how to size the cards using other methods. Next I remove one more column. This leaves is with a card that covers the full width of the container. Choosing the card, I will resize the card using bootstrap sizing utility. I go down to appearance and set the width to 50% and 75%. This percentage is related to the width of the column. The card can also be sized using CSS. To demonstrate this, I first assign an ID to the card. I then go to the Styles panel where I add a style for the ID. The property is width, the value is 36M. The problem with setting a width in this manner is illustrated when I go to Mobile View. When I reset the value to auto, the problem is solved. I'll remove the width property so that it will not interfere with the rest of the demonstration. Let's have a bit of fun with the card. I choose the card body and apply a negative top margin. I also set the left and right margins. By default, the card body has a transparent background color. 
so that we can see the text body over the image, I set the background color to light. I see a border that needs removing. For this, I choose the card. Scrolling down, I set the border to none. To add a bit of spice, I would like to have a shadow surrounding the image and the card body. I want to use the Bootstrap Shadow class. Shadows are disabled in Bootstrap by default and can quickly be enabled using Wappler's Theme Manager. Choose the image and add the shadow class. Do the same for the card body. I turn the preview mode on to get a better impression of the creation. One last touch is to center the text in the card body. This is a short demonstration of the versatility of the bootstrap card. In a separate video, I will create many more examples that may be of use when developing the website. Getting back to the serious stuff, I'll add two columns. Inside each column, I add a card. I'll now make a few adjustments to the second card. Here I add a card header. The text field is used to add the header content. This method of adding heading content is restrictive. I could add bold. I could add a color. And under some circumstances this may be okay. For more flexibility, I prefer to add a heading element to the card header. This gives me more options to style the content. I will now add coloring to the card header. To brighten things up, I'll add images to the cards. Back to the second card, I add a card footer. Inside the card footer, I add a button and remove the existing button. I then add styling to the card footer and to the button. Isn't Wappler a great tool? How easy is all this? And for master stroke, I add a shadow to the card. As I previously shown, the card deck automatically adjusted the heights of the card to the same height as the longest card. Without the card deck, I need to add a height of 100% of the cards for the same effect. There are many other style rules that we can apply to the card. A background color being one of them. I will not go no further into that in this video. I have him already approaching the 10 minute mark that I prefer to limit the video to. Okay. Just for the heck of it, I'll give the card a background color. But that is it for this section. In the last part of this video, I will demonstrate the mosaic layout using Wappler's masonry extension. First I remove the heights from the cards. I also assign a size of 4 calls to the 3 columns. After the 3rd column, I add a new column and size it to 4 columns. Then I add more columns containing different height cards. I did show this in the layout section of this video. Hence I'll speed the video up so as not to bore you.
When done, I select the row. I make the row a masonry element and give it an expression of 1. Here we see the transformation that has taken place. The cards have been placed in a mosaic format. One last adjustment and I will call it a day. As you can see, masonry defaults to 4 columns. I will change that to 3 columns. That is it for now. I hope this video has been of use. My name is Ben Plesier. I will continue to create more videos like this one. If you want to stay updated, hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.